Damn, I'm looking good. Look, we all know that we love Duke Nukem 3D. It's easily one of the greatest games of all time for the PC and it became a big staple for the FPS genre. That said, Duke 3D was originally for the MS-DOS. You know, that OS that had just a black screen with white text and that was just that. Yeah, those were the dark ages. Granted, some operating systems like Windows 95 and 98 still had MS-DOS compatibility. However, later operating systems like XP and Vista did remove that said compatibility. However, this didn't last though, as Duke 3D's source code was released after its initial launch and throughout the years there have been tons of source ports to choose from. So today, we will talk about which source ports are available for Duke Nuka 3D and which one should you use. So let's find out together. Ah yes, DOSBox, the big good old DOS emulator that is used on so many DOS games available on either Steam or GOG. If you have bought Duke Nuka 3D Megaton Edition on Steam, you probably know that there's an option that you can play the game via DOSBox. Basically, this game on DOSBox is as close as you can get for an authentic version of Duke Nuka 3D, which, spoil alert, is not that good. Sure, the experience is authentic, but playing nowadays is very clunky. For example, you cannot disable auto-aim, which granted, this game was designed with that, but with later source ports, you could disable that. Not to mention that the highest resolution you could choose is 800 by 600. With other source ports, this limit was removed. Here's a comparison of the DOS version compared to eDuke32. You know, playing the game on 320 by 200 looks very nostalgic, the way I remember playing Duke Nuka 3D for the first time. The worst part is that the mouse look is pretty terrible. It feels very clunky, even when I tinkered some settings, it was still very janky, making aiming such a nuisance on DOSBox. Like, when I use it for this video, it felt really bad. And yes, I'm aware that B mouse exists but I've tried it and it didn't work for me, so at least there's that. I feel like that DOSBox for Duke 3D is very outdated. Sure, you can use it for historic purposes, but there are better source ports to use. If you're a big Duke Nuka 3D fan, you probably know eDuke32 and it's easily the most iconic source port available for the game. Released on December 2004, it was created by some employees of Free Realms and Void Point, Richard Terminix Guy Bale, Evan Hendricks 266 Hamush, and Pierre Lou Plagman Griffice. The former went to work on Iron Fury and its expansion Aftershock, while the latter is now working on the software side of Steam Deck of all things. Now that's a huge win in my book. Anyways, what this source port offers? Well, a lot of things. For instance, it fixed numerous bugs or glitches from the vanilla version of Duke Nuka 3D as well as better performance and less crashes. Support for newer screen resolutions from 1080p to 4K, support for many mods, most notably high resolution pack and more recently the Legacy Edition, better mouse and keyboard controls, option to turn on or off auto-aim, choosing different graphic renders like software, polymos and polymer. The last two use OpenGL, where software rendering uses the CPU, making it more taxing for high resolutions. As for Polymost and Polymer, Polymost looks pretty good and it's faithful to the original software rendering. Granted, back in the late 2000s, the colors from Polymost looked washed off. But with the recent updates, it became like software rendering, but better and faster. Polymer is a render which was created and written by Plagman. It is much more demanding than the other renderers, since it uses modern shaders and dynamic lighting. In my opinion, the render looks pretty meh. Sure, I do love the concept, but the execution is pretty meh. It runs slow even on my rig.
It doesn't end there though, eDuke32 also supports user maps, increasing the game's longevity. Not sure the vanilla version also supports user maps, but with eDuke32's excellent features, there are many maps that really push the source port to its limits, and since the vanilla version doesn't have these features, it's literally and figuratively impossible to play these levels. One issue that I have with this source port is the lack of demo playbacks. Sure, you can record your own demos, but playing these old demos when you install the game, they don't play it for some reason. I assume maybe with the bug fixes as well as some improvements, these old demos are incompatible, so there's that I guess. All in all, if you're new on how to play Duke Nuka 3D on modern systems, then eDuke32 is the way to go. Though, if you're not into these changes and you still want that vanilla DOS experience of Duke Nuka 3D, well, there's a source port that can do that. This source port, while it looks identical to eDuke32 in not a lot of ways, it's actually more accurate than eDuke32. The most notable example is the doors that can crush you, which is a typical build engine feature. In the recent versions of eDuke32, this was fixed. Now you guys might be thinking, okay cool, but is there more to it than just being accurate to the DOS version? Well yes, thanks to its accuracy, it supports demo playbacks from the Atomic Edition, which was something eDuke32 lacked, so that's nice. But wait, there's more! This source port also supports other build engine games, like Redneck Rampage and most importantly, Duke Nukem 64. That letter is important, since it's not using emulation, it's a true PC port, focusing entirely on native execution, and the results are pretty accurate to the original version. And playing this version is pretty simple. All you need is the US copy of Duke Nukem 64 and place it inside the folder of Red Nukem and you're good to go. Compared to the console version of Duke Nukem 64, not only it feels better visually, but playability-wise it's much better. With keyboard and mouse support, it's a bliss. Given the controls in that game were atrocious, and that was without taking into account the terrible N64 controller. Like, who designed this greasy controller? So if you want to play this game or having an accurate DOS experience of Duke Nukem 3D, then Red Nukem is the source port for you. Next, we have Build GDX, a source port which was originally used only for Blood. Given at the time when the source port was created, Blood never had a source port of its own, since its source code was never released. The folks from Build GDX reverse engineered the game, and at the time, it was the only way to play Blood without resorting to the DOS version. However, as time went on, Build GDX began to support other Build Engine titles like Duke 3D, Shadow Warrior, Red McNary Page. Exhum and even the Seven Paladins of all things. So you might be thinking, what this source port offers over the other source ports? Well, similar to Red Nukem, it also supports demo playbacks, and is also just as accurate as Red Nukem as well. Not to mention, it has three renders to choose from, Software, Polymost, and PolyGDX. Software mode is much more demanding than Poly and PolyGDX, However, the software rendering of this port runs much, much worse than the other source ports like Red Nukem and eDuke32. So, I advise to stay away from the software rendering in the source port. As for PolyGDX, the difference between Polymost and PolyGDX is that the skybox renders a bit different in the new renderer than in Polymost, as you can see in this video alongside some better performance here and there. Not to mention that just like with the other source ports, it also supports the official expansion packs like Nuclear Winter, Duke It Out in DC, and Life is a Beach. One thing I really like in this source port is that when you play one of the expansion packs, the text font in the menus changes the color to match the expansion pack that you play, which is a nice touch. Oh, and that's not all. Unlike eDuke 32 and Red Nukem, Build GDX has one thing that these two don't is that the fact you can play the fifth episode from World Tour without using the greasy version that Steam has. Which is a huge win in my book, seeing that I don't need to play that filthy greasy version of Duke 3D just to play that episode. Overall, Build GDX is another great source port for Duke 3D with some extra whistles that other source ports don't have, especially the episode 5 support.
Finally, we have Rays, which is another source port that, much like Build GDX, it supports most build engine games like Blood, Shadow Warrior, and Power Slave. And just like GDX, it also supports the fifth episode of World Tour, which again is a blessing for Duke fans like me. This source port also supports Vulkan Backend, which is great for AMD GPU users given that these GPUs don't really get along with OpenGL on Windows. As far as execution goes, Rays functions exactly the same as eDuke32 with some graphical features sprinkled all around it, like the addition of Bloom and lots of post-processing effects to make the game prettier and it's much better than eDuke32 polymer rendering, since for me it doesn't tank the frame rate that hard when using these effects. Like in GZ Doom, you can also downscale the game's resolution to almost make the game look how it looked back in 1996, which is interesting. You might be also wondering, where's the software rendering? And the answer is that there will never be a software rendering unfortunately, as the creator of the source port, Graf Zal, the man behind the iconic Doom source port, GZ Doom, said that it would have been too much of a roadblock and this source port is supposed to be advanced hardware only port. As far as modding capabilities are concerned, Rays has still ways to go, but as time goes on, in the future, the modding potential for this source port will be huge, hopefully, but for a source port right now, it's not too shabby. There are other source ports for Duke 3D, like JFate Duke 32, which was one of the very first source ports for the game. Matter of fact, this source port, or more specifically, its coding was important to the creation of Duke 3D Megaton Edition. It's outdated, but still important nevertheless. XDuke a source port that was used for online multiplayer in mind for Duke 3D. However, it was absolutely outclassed by NetDuke32, which is a fork of an older version of eDuke32 with the sole purpose of supporting multiplayer. As for dishonorable mentions, we should not forget the World Tour Edition of Duke 3D from Gearbox. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, it's a very mediocre port. Sure, the addition of the fifth episode was nice, as well as the developer commentary by Alan Bloom, Level Lord Grey, and Greasy Bastard, but everything else regarding the feel of the game is pretty bad and bland. Not to mention that it has glitches that are not present in the other versions of Duke 3D. Granted, there was a patch that fixed some bugs, but unfortunately while Gearbox still has an online submission form for reporting bugs and glitches, there's still no patch as of today, given that this version was released in 2016, almost 8 years after its release. There's still no patch. What a shame. So, the question is, which source port is the best to play Duke 3D? Well, this is a very tough question to answer. I feel like it depends on person to person. I think there's no best Duke 3D source port. It's up to the player preferences. If a person wants a 200% vanilla no source port experience, then DOSBox exists. If a person wants to play Duke 64 with keyboard and mouse, then Red Nukin is the way to play. If you want to play the fifth episode without playing the greasy version of Duke 3D, you know, the world tour, then Build GDX and Rays are the source ports for that. And if you want to play tons of Duke mods like the Legacy Edition and having a very bright and updated experience with Duke Nuka 3D, then eDuke32 is the source port for that. What I'm trying to say is, is that there is nothing wrong with using multiple source ports of said game. I use eDuke32, Red Nukem, and Rays for different reasons. And I think that if you're new to this, at least you should give these source ports a try. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Thank you so much, and make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content. And in the comments below, which source port of Duke Nukem 3D is your favorite? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. And that's all folks, see you next time.